Hello everyone, welcome to Arc Genesis. This is Dipankar Nath. I will be talking about building materials and elements. By profession, I am an architect. I am practicing for last five years. In this video, I am going to explain about a most important building element, which is arch. So, in brief, in this video, I have I'm going to explain the definition of arches, history of arches, and elements of arches, and finally, how do arches work. The rest of the content I will be explaining in the next video. So what is arches? The arch is a curved structure sustaining superiorly closing and opening or a hole, so all its parts are compressed and none of them occur extensions. This pressure are transmitted to the support, which holds the arc ends. So let's say, if I take a bamboo stick and hold it from both ends, then press it like this, it will take this kind of curvilinear shape. Now this is an arch. To keep it stable, we'll put one support here and one support here. This is the ground. So now this is an arch, a complete arch. In case of building, what we do is we make the foundation first. These are foundations. Then we make the masonry, brick masonry or stone masonry as a support of arch. Then we put small blocks of stones or small blocks of bricks or woods blocks can be used as well. So now this is an complete arch. What is happening is the main pressure is coming from here and it is dividing into two parts. The whole force is going through these piers, which are the supports of this entire arch and it is transmitted to the ground. In architectural terminology, we will say to the foundation. So now this arch is mostly stable. So the arch is a way of making roof or a doorway or a window without using any heavy beams. Jis mein aap small stones use kar sakte ho, small bricks use kar sakte ho, clay bricks use kar sakte ho, ya small block of woods use kar sakte ho, which is much more cheaper and easier to handle as well. Aap right side mein dekh sakte ho as an example. These are the arches. Which is supported. These are the supports. And there is one more layer of arches. And these are the supports which are hinged in ground with foundation. This is a example of ancient time, ancient Roman architecture. It's called aqueduct. So Romans used this arch in full potential. This image is for Pont du Gard aqueduct, which is a Roman aqueduct. Cross, it crosses this river called Gard River in France. It's a now it's a UNESCO heritage site. So basically, uh, Roman used is as a channel of water from a freshwater source source like lake spring. उसके बाद ये पानी वो लोग drinking या फिर irrigation या फिर fountains और baths के लिए use करते थे. 
और नीचे वाला जो इमेज है इसमें देर इज अ ब्रिज विथ लॉर्ड ऑफ आर्चेस ये भी एंशियंट रोमन आर्किटेक्चर की एक एग्जाम्पल है दिस ब्रिज वॉज मेड टू कनेक्ट दिस कास्टल दिस कास्टल टू दिस सिटी सेंटर और इसके ऊपर जो क्लैडिंग हुई है दैट क्लैडिंग इज ट्रेवर्टन मार्बल देन आर्चेस मे बी सिनोनम्स विथ वॉल्स बट ए वॉल्ट मे बी डिस्टिंग्विस्ड एज ए कंटिन्यूअस आर्च फॉर्मिंग ए रूफ सो नाउ I'll show you a example of vault. This is a example of vault. You can see there are series of arches, which is making a roof. This is called vault. And this image is a example of barrel vault in Aranjuez in Spain. Next. its advantages and disadvantages before telling you about the advantages of arches i'll tell you what is the problem this is an example of ancient greek architecture they made it as a temple in acropolis they used to use this kind of huge pieces of stone block as lintel to support the upper structure total height of this building is uh, around 45 feet and the span of column to column is 7 feet still they used to use this kind of heavy piece of stones then romans started using arches so two problems are solved wide opening could be spanned with small and stone blocks or brick blocks which was easy to transport and easy to handle as well then arch was bent upward to resist and to conduct into its support and the loads that tended to bend the lintel downward next is history of arches now the question is who started making arches greeks or the romans arches appeared as early as second millennium bc in mesopotamian brick architecture true arches which was known as cobble arches also also was seen in number of civilizations in ancient near east and in levant but they did not use it frequently they mostly used it in underground services such as drains so in this image you can see there is a type of arch which is which was used to use in ancient near east and this kind of art was used to use in ancient near east this is the image of istar gate in babylon and the next image you can see the arch of levant and the third image you can see this is the example of cobble arch so basically what they used to do is they made they used to make this kind of supports and then stone blocks in step they put stone blocks in steps this kind of arches was made in maya civilization so maya civilization was seen in near uh american countries such as colombia mexico where the spanish colonization was there the city gate of ashkelon a rare exception the bronze is arched in the city of kananite this gate of ashkelon modern day it's called israel dating at 1850 bc this is the gate of ashkelon it was made in mud bricks then greek roads foot bridge it is an example of voyager arch roads foot bridges is an ancient greek arch bridge in the city of roads in greek greece dating to the 4th century bc or early hellenistic period the modest structure represents the oldest known greek bridge with a voyager arch made with porous limestone block this is the voyager arch in 2010 a robot discovered a long arched 
रूफ्ड पैसेज जो है अंडर द पिरामिड ऑफ क्विटल कोल्ड विच स्टैंड इन द एंशियंट सिटी ऑफ टियोतीहुआकन नॉर्थ ऑफ द मैक्सिको सिटी डेटेड अराउंड टू हंड्रेड एडी देन एट्रुस्कन एट्रुस्कन वर द फर्स्ट सिविलाइजेशन टू यूज एन आर्च एट्रुस्कन सिविलाइजेशन वॉज ए सिविलाइजेशन ऑफ एंशियंट इटली इन द एरिया कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग रफली टू टस्कनी अम्ब्रिया एंड लैजियो आफ्टर द रोमन्स कॉन्क्वर द एट्रुस्कन दे लर्न द आर्च कॉन्सेप्ट फ्रॉम एट्रुस्कन दे रिफाइंड इट एंड वर द फर्स्ट बिल्डर्स टू टैप इट्स फुल पोटेंशियल ऑफ आर्च वॉल्ट एंड डोम्स then they erected our structures such as bridges aqueducts and gates i have shown you few of the bridges roman bridges and the aqueducts in earlier slides they have also introduced the triumphal arches this is the example of a triumphal arch the arch of constantine in rome a monument structure in the shape of arcway this type is associated with the Roman architecture. There are few similar arches. Such as the triumphal arch in Genoa. This is also a monumental arch. Then the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Then Narva triumphal arch in Saint Petersburg. Then the india gate in delhi then vaults the segmental arch was first built by the romans who realized that an arch in a bridge did not have to be semicircular the semicircular arch was followed by the pointed gothic arch then elliptical arch etc et parabolic arches were introduced in construction by spanish architect antony gaudi vaults vaults began to be used for roofing large interior spaces such as hells and temples a function which was also assumed by dome structures from the 1st century of bc onwards an example of vaults this building is notre dame in paris this is the interior space of that these are the arches making a roof form this this is called vault this is the building of marcia fresca in teresa in spain a gaudi inspired building on parabolic arches you can see a huge parabolic arch this is all one more this is one more a series of arches and this is these are the vault next is element of arches extra doors extra doors is the outer curve of arch inter doors inter doors is the inner curve of arch soffit soffit is the inner surface of arch voiser voiser is a wedge shaped unit in arch these all are voiser crown crown is the highest part of an extra door this is crown keystone keystone is the wedge shaped unit fixed at the center of an arch this is called keystone spandrel spandrel is the span spandrel is the curved triangular space formed between extra doors and the horizontal line this is called spandrel next is abutment abutment is the end point of an arch this is abutment skewback skewback is the inclined or splayed surface on the abutment this is skewback springing points these are the points from which the curve of arch spring this is called springing point springing line springing line is the imaginary line which is connecting the springing points springer springer is the first voiser at springing level these are springer pier pier is the intermediate support of an arcade 
this is pi r this is also one pi r arcade arcade is a row of arches in continuation like this is an arch then there is one more arch so this is an arcade next is haunch the lower half of the arch between the crown and the skew back the lower half of the arch between crown and skew back this is haunch ring ring is a this red highlighted area it's called ring basically the circular course forming an arch imposed imposed is the projecting course at the upper part of pyre or abutment to stretch the springing line this is called imposed bed joint joints between the voyeurs which radiate from center these are called bed joint center or striking point this is the geometrical center point from where the arc forming the extra rows arc rings and inter rows this is a center point span span is the clear horizontal distance between the piles this is called span now how do arches work in an arch structure all of the elements hold each other in a place let's say if we take out one voyeur from this arch this arch will not be stable because the arch is curved the upper edge has a greater circumference the upper edge has a greater circumference than the lower so that each of its blocks must be cut in wedge shaped that press from firmly against whole surface of the neighboring blocks and contact loads uniformly this form creates problems of equilibrium that do not exist in lintel the stresses in arch tend to squeeze the blocks outward radically and loads divert this outward forces downward to exert the resultant diagonal force this is called thrust which will cause the arc to collapse if it is not properly buttressed so basically we can say an arch is a pure compression form an arch cannot replace a lintel or two free standing posts unless the post are massive enough to buttress the thrust and to conduct it into the foundation as in ancient roman triumphal arches thank you for watching the video if you like the video kindly press the button like subscribe comment and share